welcome back to my channel. So usually with these videos I tend to chat a lot in the beginning of the video before I get to the actual content. Today I'm just going to jump straight into it because I'm a bit worried that this video is going to go on for a long time. So prepare yourselves. So by the title you guys probably already guessed that this video is going to be about my budget and tips that I can give you guys on how to manage your money and achieve your goals in 2017. This is something which has been, surprisingly enough to me, requested by a lot of you guys, especially on our Buying a House at 21 video. And I figured that with it being the beginning of a new year, it would be a really good time to do the video. Because if you set yourself out a really clear budget and start applying these tips now, by the end of the year, you can have a really good savings to spend on a holiday or just to treat yourself or pretty much anything you want. So as I mentioned I'm just going to jump straight into it and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. So to start off I first want to make the point that money does not always equal happiness. I know that people always say that but I think in this day and age we tend to get confused very easily because a lot of the time happiness equals having the freedom to do the things that you want to do. And unfortunately, 99% of the time, it means that you've got to have some sort of funding behind you to make that happen. So while I'm not trying to say that having a budget, having money is necessarily going to make you happy, it can certainly help in terms of achieving those goals. So this is why I highly recommend having a solid budget. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share our budget, including figures to an extent, and I'll talk about that in a minute and share with you guys tips as well on how you guys can apply that to your life and how you can alter it. So by the end of the year, you can have a nice little savings behind you or you can find that you have a little more money to spend throughout the year. So with the figures that I'm gonna be sharing in our budget, I'm not gonna give you guys exact figures and I think it's very rare that you come across someone who's willing to share that level of information with everybody but I have gone and calculated all of the figures and broken them down into percentages. So I'm gonna share what percent of our income we spend on each thing per month and how we budget to make things a little bit cheaper, a little bit more affordable and thus putting a little more money back in our pockets to save up for whatever we want in terms of monthly goals, yearly goals and long-term goals as well. So do bear in mind that these figures are going to be very different for everybody depending on what your personal circumstances are. You might be in a situation where you have to spend very little on rent or you don't have car payments to make. Depending on what country you live in, you may not have to pay for things like life insurance or car insurance. So do bear in mind that these figures are obviously going to vary massively depending on what country you're in. In Australia, we might earn either a lot more per hour or a lot less per hour than what you earn in your country. And that's obviously gonna affect the numbers drastically. As well as that, house prices vary to crazy extents from country to country. So what we spend on a mortgage might be a lot less or a lot more than what you guys have to spend on yours. So do bear in mind that you might not be able to follow these percentages exactly, but more as a guide to help you guys formulate your own budgets. Moving on to our personal budget. So as you guys guess, I'm the one in the house who handles all of the money just because it's something that I'm good at. It's something that I like doing. And every month I break all of our expenses down into seven categories. I almost did eight then, seven categories. And the first one is going to be consumables. Now, <laughs> I use this term very loosely because I've got a lot of different areas in our consumables. There's like entertainment and things that are just, they're not consumables. Consumables are like things that you eat and perishables. These are not all perishables. The first one is food, so that does get classed as consumables. Then we have fuel, which we consume a fair bit of, so I guess that goes into that category. Phones, they're something that we have spent more, have spent less over the years with. At the moment, we only have to pay for one phone because James has a work phone, so that's not as expensive as what it used to be. Then we have internet and our Netflix and YouTube Red subscriptions as well. And this makes up 16% of our total income. Most of that, I'm gonna be honest, is taken up by food because you've gotta make sure that everyone's fed before anything else. Um, and then the next category would be the fuel that we spend to go to and from wherever we're going in the week. Now, food is something which, once again, can vary greatly from country to country. Personally, I'm a very good grocery shopper when it comes to budgeting and finding really good deals and sales. I like to make a lot of things from scratch which make it a lot cheaper in the long run and this means that we have a little bit more money to spend on other things in the month. So 
out of those categories, we can't really spend too much less on fuel because James has got to go to work. I have to use my car to do the various running around things that I need to do in the week. Phones is, you know, I'm on a plan and I try not to go over that, but there are certain months where I do go a little bit over. Internet, we are on a set plan every month and we have unlimited data, so we never go over on that. And then for Netflix and YouTube Red, they're the same amount every month. So really in that category, groceries is the only thing we can save on. Next, we move to our loans. And once again, that's something that we can't really alter. The banks and their ever-changing interest rates sort of change that up for us from month to month, but they stay fairly stable and within our loans we just have our mortgage and our car loan which we're hoping to pay our car loan off very soon so that puts a little bit more money back in our pockets each month and our loans take up a whopping 39.5 percent of our budget but they sort of should it's our accommodation and it's our vehicles so we need those to function with and not everybody has to have a vehicle that was a personal choice of ours and some people like to buy their cars outright or buy a cheaper car this was just something that we did save up for a long time so that is a luxury that we do afford every month but that's something that you guys could cut down on if you're using public transport or you don't have a car loan to repay. Of course, as well, you might not have a mortgage, you might still be living with your parents or you might have rent and you could always make your accommodation a bit cheaper by finding somewhere that's a bit cheaper to rent, although it's kind of hard in this day and age. Next, we move on to insurance. Now, this is something which once again varies massively from country to country. In Australia, we do have kind of like a health insurance. We have Medicare and everyone in Australia has Medicare. So whenever we go to the doctor, whenever we go to the hospital, whatever, it is free. However, some people do choose to have private health insurance and that just entitles you to have basically a better room if you do need to go to the hospital for whatever reason or if you're going to be on a waiting list for like an optional surgery like having tonsils removed or grommets fitted then you're just going to be on a waiting list if you choose to go through the public healthcare system however if you're on private health insurance which you pay a monthly fee for then you can generally book those procedures straight away now we don't actually have private health insurance it's something that we do want to sign up to in terms of just the dental coverage alone because the amount that we're going to spend on dental out of our pockets for three kids is going to be massive over the years I just know it so it'll be worth having private health insurance for us for that however uh, we do have life insurance which is kind of important I don't know what sort of benefits and things other countries have but in Australia it's fairly important to have life insurance car insurance obviously you've got to have that in case you ever get into an accident nobody wants to be paying huge amounts of money out of their pockets if you do god forbid get into an accident and then home and contents insurance as well is very important god forbid once again if something happens to your house you don't want to be stuck with a mortgage for the next 30 years of your life and not be able to pay it off and obviously insurances are something that you can bargain with. I always do bargain with because insurance companies do like to sort of every now and then every year they like to push the, the repayments up a little bit more I've noticed. If you just give them a call up and say look I've just noticed that my monthly or yearly premiums have gone up I found a company that can do it for cheaper so I'm thinking about switching they'll usually bring it back down again they're very competitive so make sure you're doing that and you'll find that you save a lot of money by doing that with your insurance companies oh I almost forgot that that makes up 5.5 percent of our income next we move on to our quarterly bills which include rates electricity and water and each month we're putting away 8.5 percent of our income to accommodate for those bills however i have noticed you can go into the post offices now and pay those bills monthly if you like you can set up like a direct debit type plan we just pay them every month and they're generally about the same every month of course with water and electricity you can be budget conscious about that so we do try to do that to bring those bills down sometimes you just got to use your air conditioning unit but then our council rates are always the same every month so that's something which doesn't tend to change too much the next category is car and that includes our licensing services and registration our licensing we tend to pay per year so that's only once a year our registration comes every six months or you can pay a year and then our services are generally every six to nine months so we have a lot of those and it can be quite a big expense licensing you can save on by paying every sort of five years or whatever but we do tend to pay for a year that's 
or one area you can semi save in. Registration is much the same. We pay every six months, although it's a little bit cheaper to pay per year. And then our car services, we have them done by our Holden dealer. But if you have them done by a sort of private mechanic, then it's generally a little bit cheaper. You just have to make sure that you're finding someone who is reputable and isn't going to charge you through the roof for parts that you don't need. So they have to be trustworthy. And you also want to make sure that they're not going to void your warranties and that they do logbook services. Because obviously that can affect the value of your car in the long run. And in terms of the amount of money we spend on those per month, it's only 2% because we do just put away a little bit every month that accommodates for those bills when they do arise. Next, we move on to one of my favorite categories and that is spending. We don't have any subcategories of what we spend our money on, but I do try and keep a mental tally when I'm spending money of how much I spend every month. And we put away 9.5% for that. So it does include things like clothes, birthdays, Christmas, that kind of stuff. And generally I'll spend less every month on what my sort of spending allowance is and save that up for months where we have birthdays and Christmas because obviously you're going to spend a lot more money in those months. Or I do try and buy things on sale when they come up and then put them away for birthdays and Christmases. If there is something that I want throughout the year, I do try and restrain myself and save it for a birthday or Christmas. But every now and then I'm happy to spend a little bit of money on myself. James is happy to spend a little bit of money on himself or a little bit of money on the kids. Just, I don't know, just so you can treat yourself. And that is totally okay. That's what that money is for. So you don't feel like you're stuck with this budget that doesn't allow you to live your life throughout the year. Next, we move on to my all-time favorite category, which you guys probably guessed is savings. We put away 19% of our income into savings, so double our spendings is our savings each month. And this one is so important that you guys try and have. I know certain incomes at certain times in your life don't allow you to have a decent savings, but I promise you guys, there will be a time where you'll be able to save. You just gotta push through these times. There's been times where we haven't been able to actually save money as well. And it's not forever. It's hard not to get down on yourself in those times where you aren't saving anything. You might be living week to week but you will get there, it's not forever. So I have actually had people sort of semi attack me in the comments before saying, you spend too much money on this, you spend too much money on that, I don't have the money to even buy myself bread this week, which trust me, my heart goes out to you because I've been there, I feel you, and it's hard watching other people save money when you're not in a position to be able to do that. But I promise if you push through, push through this time and see that end goal of, one day having a bit more freedom with your income, you will get there. It's just everybody has a time in their life where there's less money. Everyone has a time in their life where there's more. And when you do have the more, you've just got to try and put away money for things like unexpected situations that arise. And they do. So try and bear that in mind. Um, but we are at a stage now where we're able to put away that percentage of our income and that might set you up to buy things throughout the year if you like, although you should really be using your spending allowance for that. The savings should more be for things like at the end of the year. If you want to have a splurge on yourself, that's totally okay. If you want to use that money to go on a holiday or put it as a down payment on something, then you've got that money there. Alternatively, you might find that you actually really like having that money in your account. Like say at the end of the year, you find yourself with $18,000 and you think, hey, I'm going to keep hoarding this money and get to $20,000. And then when you get to $20,000, you might be like, hey, I'm going to get to $25,000. You might keep wanting to hoard it in that way, which is a great, great mindset to get into because then you will have a nice little nest egg to sit on in case any unexpected situations arrive or you do just want to buy yourself something cash money one day it's totally up to you and you'll have the freedom to do that when that does happen having said that sometimes we do just need to have a little splurge on ourselves i don't want you guys to put yourselves in a position where you're anxious every single week because you're like i have to put away this money i can't afford to get myself bread this week because i have to put away this amount of money nobody wants to have to put up with that level of stress and anxiety and i think in this day and age we all have so much to stress about, so much to be anxious about. You know, if you can afford to spend a little bit more money on yourself and it makes you feel like you're doing something for you, it makes you feel more complete, then by all means go ahead and do it. This is just a guide that I've used to try and 
put away money that we've used to achieve our goals and it's worked really well for us so I thought I would share it with you guys and as always I want to hear you guys' tips you know if you want to break your income down into percentages and share it down below that would be a massive help and even where you're from and how that differs from country to country because Lord knows someone from your country who isn't really vibing with what I'm saying might come along see what you've got to say and think hey I, I can apply that to my life. That is a realistic budget for me. Or if you just need any kind of advice, feel free to put your questions down below. I'll do my best to get back to you guys. And if you feel like you've done really well with your money, have a little read of the comments and see if there's anyone you might be able to pass your knowledge and information along to. Of course, being as nice as possible. I hate it when people in the comments get into these nasty feuds. There's no point in doing that. This video is about how to make yourself happy and you're never going to be happy by getting into feuds. So. Let's try and keep the discussion really nice and really positive and I'm really looking forward to having a read through and seeing what you guys' questions and tips and tricks and everything are as well. Anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I have yet to edit it but the filming itself has taken me about 45 minutes so I'm hoping I can condense this down for you guys. I don't know if anyone could sit through 45 minutes of me chatting on about money. <laughs> if you do like these videos, make sure to give them a thumbs up and hit subscribe. I've been told that YouTube's getting a little bit better with their notifications and putting videos back in subscription boxes at the moment. But just in case they're not, you can always hit that little bell icon down below and that'll send you guys a notification every single time I upload a video. If you want to follow me on any of my other social media accounts, I do have our family vlogging channel, Join the Jacksons. I do have Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat, and I'll have all of the links and usernames for those down in the description box below. I've been pretty slack with them in the last couple of weeks just because we have been taking that tiny itty bitty social media break, but I promise we are coming back in the next week. So keep your eyes peeled for that because there are going to be some really fun new videos coming up. And other than that, I will see you guys all next week.